Hi, Sirdar here for InfoWorld at IDG. Today in Smart Go, we're going to take a look at how Go works with third-party packages, things that are not available in the standard library that you want to use in your programs. For this example, I'm going to use a short program excerpted from Go's own documentation, which uses a demo package called Quote. It's available in the official repository for third-party Go packages, pkg.go.dev. Now, when you want to use a third-party package in a Go application, you declare it as an import, as you would something from the standard library. And if Go can't find the package in the standard library or in any other places you've specified in the Go path environment variable, it'll search for it on package.go.dev. Now, this mechanism is complex enough that it deserves its own separate treatment, so I'll go into detail about it in another video. Right now, I just want to demonstrate how the whole thing works. Now, in this case, we have quote and a function, quote.go, imported into our application. However, as you can see, when trying to run it, just specifying it isn't enough because the package can't be found anywhere in the usual places where Go keeps such things. We have to add it by hand first, so running this program will fail. Now to add the package, there's a few ways to do it, but one of the most elegant is to take our code and wrap it up in a module, a unit of code organization in Go, which allows us to track all of its dependencies. This way, anything needed by the code will be automatically fetched and kept up to date on demand. Now, the whole way that modules work um, is worth exploring in detail separately, but the basic idea is that they're a way to handle code organization. Now, to set up our code as a module, we use a separate command, go mod init, and the name of the module we want to use for this code. I'm going to use quote for the name for the sake of consistency with the file name we've already used. Now, when we run the code, Go's runtime knows to look for the third-party packages and add them to this particular module. It also stores checksums of the needed modules so it knows which versions of things to work with. Now let's change things slightly. We're going to use a newer version of the quote package. The default is version 1, but there's a version 3 out there which we can specify explicitly by adding slash v3 to the import and by changing our function to refer to go v3 since the functions inside version 3 of the module are named differently to avoid collisions. And as you can see when we run the code again, Go's runtime obtains the proper version that we've asked for and attracts the dependency for that new version separately from the old one. In later videos, I'll go into detail about how versioning for different packages side by side can be handled. But this should give you a general idea of the workflow. You use import, and then you use the module functions to track everything on a project by project basis. The more projects you have, the greater the chance that different versions of packages will conflict with each other. So it's a really good idea to try and keep versionings distinct for each project. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the IDG Tech Talk channel on YouTube. And for more Smart Go, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Infoworld.com.